Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. I'm Treacherous Trista. We're joined by former FBI profiler and expert in extraterrestrial paranormal affairs. It's a long title. We have Ben Hansen on the line here. With <laughs> Hello. Well, thank you. Good morning. First, um, I, uh, the, the FBI profiler is not correct. I, uh-huh. I think it was a press release at some point that probably had that in it. Um, it was uh, an error. Um, I definitely was not a profiler, but I did work for the FBI for a while. So, all right, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> well, we talked about your new show, Alien Invasion. Hudson Valley is part of the Shock Docs on Discovery Plus. It's playing right now, as we speak. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it was a fun, a fun uh, a show to uh, to produce, investigate. Hudson Valley is a small small but it encompasses an an area of um new york about an hour north and part of connecticut is is part of this valley and in 19 i wanna i I always get the exact date kind of wrong but it was 82 84 around what we call ufo flap a lot of ufo sightings um allegedly 5,000. okay that take place during that time and it, it became a UFO hotspot. Now, I, I remember it as a kid because I was, I was a nerd when it comes to UFOs. But as we got into it more and looking at the research, we find out that it's been happening since like the 1900s and continues today. There's been over 3,000 more sightings just like in the last decade. And why? You know, is it the people? Is it the place? Is there something unique about it? And so that's what this, uh, this show... Uh, Alien Invasion Hudson Valley is about, and um, I think people are, are really enjoying it. I'm hearing good feedback about it. You said you were, you know, a geek as a kid about uh, aliens or UFOs. Like, um, so when did it go from just being something you're interested in to something you like wanted to pursue? Well, probably when I grew up and realized I, I got to earn a living. <laughs> it's like most most people don't get to do this because unless you are doing TV or you're writing books continuously, people just can't go off and say, I'm going to be a UFO researcher, right? Um, and so what what doing TV allowed me to do was to spend more time doing this. I would love just to do it as a hobby, but um, having something like a show attached to it allows me to, um, when I'm doing it, to do it full time. And... Um, it's 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 really awesome because these are mysteries that since I was probably five years old that really uh, had me just hooked. You know, I wanted to know first of all, is this really going on, and then secondly, what degree? Because a lot of people, you know, everything from the classification system that developed close encounters or the first kind, the second kind, the third kind. Now people come along, they've added the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh kind, right? So you kind of, I think where we're at is a, a, a general belief in the country is that most people now surveyed believe that UFOs are real. So what does that mean? People are seeing objects that can't be easily explained. We just don't know who's flying them. That's where most people fall in here. Where people want to take it now the other end of the extreme is many people believe there's a program there's an agenda being visited by multiple races and and in fact may have some sort of hybrid you know breeding or dna program and and i'm not completely on that side but i do have an open mind and i'm like well if this is true and if it's possible we've been visited and some of them have been abducted or experimented on, what would the next step be? So I can't really say no, you know, to, to any part of it, but I do require that there's a, a lot of not just circumstantial evidence, but, but something else that makes me say, okay, I'm, I'm there now. Mm-hmm. So the, how did the group, uh, the three of you get together? Did you know each other before the show? 
So I knew Mark D'Antonio for quite a while. He's the, the chief photo analyst for MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. And um, Mark and I had uh, worked together with the, the Huffington Post, a reporter friend of mine, Lee Spiegel, used to write for the Weird News column. And Lee um, would send us these stories. Now, Mark was always more skeptical than me. It was like he was trying to outdo me. Like, I would come back in most cases and have some sort of an explanation of a video they sent me. I'm like, yeah, I think it's probably, you know, like a, a flare or something. And, and Mark would agree. And then on some of them, like, I have no idea because it can't be this, this, and this. And Mark would come up with what I would, I joke with him, a ridiculous explanation. He would never settle on, that's unexplained. And so, anyways, Mark and I, good friends, colleagues for many years. And then Melissa worked for Gaia TV. And uh, they do a lot of these, um, uh, you know, programming on uh, meditation and holistic things and, um, and the UFO subjects and psychic abilities. And so, I knew of her... Um, through that as well, because I talked with Gaia and she was over there developing as a journalist. So yeah, it just kind of came together. We, uh, the three of us worked together really well. Cool. Uh, Tristan, do you have a question? Do you think that the citizens of Hudson Valley should be alarmed? Well, if I was living there, I can tell you this much. I know many people, including my wife would not want to move there. Um, she, She's not in fear that, you know, she's going to be abducted, but it's, it's both an amazing place, but also there's vibes. There's vibes in certain areas. Like, like I, I would say there are places in the, in the world I wouldn't go camping alone. And even though it'd be fascinating to, to do a lot of outdoor camping and stuff there, I would do it with trepidation. I'm not saying that the people are in danger, but I can tell you the people that I talked to, several of them had horrific accounts. And when you're being, you know, taken against your will and you believe these things are happening to you, it's not a pleasant thing always. So um, I guess to answer your question, I wouldn't say, you know, that the people are necessarily in danger, but many would disagree with me and, uh, I would want to know a little bit more about the area before I move there. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's going, been going on for, you know, hundred over a hundred years. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, re recently, you know, most people know the government came out and said that there were, you know, UFOs or they didn't say alien or anything. But they said they were crafts made, you know, not on the earth, whatever exactly that means. Um, for one thing, obviously it's a bit in the news, but are you surprised it's not been a bigger news item? Well, um, you know, just to summarize, because I talk about this forever, but um, I've got to jump on another call. Um, I'm not surprised. I, we, we, I think um, what we could say is this. There's been never so much attention by the media on the subject as there has been in the past, let's say, two or three years. And for us researching, that's amazing. That's what we love because people are finally taking it seriously. Now, are we surprised there's not more attention? Yeah, we are. But I don't think people see the significance of, of these little pieces of disclosure that are coming out. They don't grasp it because they're not immersed in it like we are. But we are getting people up to speed. And, and I think there will be more interest once they realize why it's important. Yeah. You think there's any reason why it would come out now as opposed to never saying anything? Or? Um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure... Um, you know that well it, here's here's the thing and a lot of people are a little bit more um uh optimistic than i am okay so a lot of people will like they'll tell you that the, the government has been preparing us and they're just waiting for the right time you know and things are going to come out now and it's, it's going to be like a snowball that just is out of control and we're going to get what we want I, on the other hand, think you have to have enough pressure on whoever these secret keepers are. You have to have leverage. Look at every social movement that has happened the last couple of years. Okay? We, we have to have enough 
say to them, we demand to know. And if you don't tell us, you know, basically, you know, we're going to do, I don't know, what are we going to do? File more FOIA requests? And, and, and you just keep telling us, no, no, no. It's not like we're going to have a in-person march on Washington, D.C. about UFOs. And why not? It's a, it's a fascinating subject to most people, but it doesn't demand um, action because it doesn't affect their daily life. Mm-hmm. And, and so because we don't have that yet, it's not like a war that happens on your doorstep and you're like, do something. You know, do something about this terrorist attack. Do something about this pandemic. And we're demanding the government take action. We don't have that with UFOs. It's more of like, this is really cool. And we're, we're upset. We're frustrated that you won't tell us the truth. But then what? You know, and so let me give you a, a quick analogy here. Okay. And this is what um, I owe a lot of this to Louis Elizondo. Lou Elizondo has been on the news a lot. He's, you know, worked at the Pentagon running the UAP program for them. He said, from the government's point of view, it's like you have a house and every night you go around before you go to bed and you close your windows, you lock your doors and um, you make sure everything is secure and then you put your alarm system on. And in the morning, you wake up, the alarm hasn't gone off, but you see muddy footprints tracked through your house and the doors are still locked. (laughs) And you're looking around like nothing's been stolen, nothing's been taken, but you're like, who was in my house? And this has been going on, not just for, you know, night after night, but for decades. So is it alarming? Yes. Like we're, we're not saying you're necessarily in danger, but you, you want to know who's been in your house and, and why you can't do anything to stop them. Right. And so I add to this analogy and I tell you, or I say, Imagine now that you you suspected your spouse was cheating on you when you went out of town and you have evidence that there's these muddy footprints or whatever. Somebody's been in your house when you're gone. Okay. And then you finally confront your spouse and you say, hey, you know, when I go on trips, somebody's been here. You need to tell me what's what's happening. And you finally spouse to admit we are the spouse. The American government's the spouse. Okay. Your spouse is the American government and they just barely told us we admit something's happening, but it's not what you think. And then they tell you, they say, well, who is it then? Well, we don't think it's the Amazon delivery person. You know, we don't think it's the milkman. We don't, and they're telling you what they don't think it is, but we can't tell you who it is, but we will say we, we're now starting to think it's concerning. Okay, what are you going to do about it? We'll look into it and we'll put up more cameras. Okay, so that's where we're at. They're finally telling you we will admit someone's been here. We don't know who it is, but we'll look into it. And, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I just don't think we're there. And and the reasons that it's holding it, I don't think the people who are really answering these public PR questions at the Navy you're putting to the, the reports, I think it's above their head. That's my personal opinion. I don't even think they know. I think that the secret keepers, if there's a group such as, you know, that they're a very small group mm-hmm. and, and they don't have that leverage over them to what they are telling us. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trissa, you have another question? I have so many questions <laughs> and you only have about more five, uh, five more minutes, but, um, Really quick, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, equipment that you use? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, basically, in Italy, we use two sets of different equipment. Um, and I like to call this crossover technology because I've done a lot of ghost investigating and, and things. And obviously, with the UFO investigations. So, when we get in a place like Hudson Valley, you see so many different phenomena happening. Um, the one in that show, for example, we went to uh, Michelle and Donna's house and there were things happening that were like poltergeists, uh, ghosts. And as they're describing, actually in, in the interview, I got touched by something on my head, <laughs> it like flicked me. 
And I'm like, it was sort of a, a traditional ghost thing. And so what we did was theorize if these this is interdimensional, maybe we could use some of the same equipment, such as um, audio recorders, you know, to possibly pick up EVPs or voices. We can use um, EMF meters, REM pods, or static changes in, in the environment. And we can, we can bring out a lot of... Um, we had uh, full spectrum cameras. We had um, some high end night vision gear I was using when we we're outside. And, and so we're, we're looking in all the spectrums we can and not limiting ourselves to just saying we're only doing ghosts, we're only doing UFOs because we really don't know what we're dealing with there. And that hadn't been done much. Um, one of the questions is if you were to take an EVP and take the recording but you're looking for extra trash, what would you expect? Can they talk in English? Would you get an English voice? You know, a lot of abductees claim that telepathy is the way they're receiving messages and it is in English. So would they be talking in your language? Would you be able to take a tone and generate a signal, a light or an audio signal they would respond to? You know, and so we put it all out on the table and we're like, Let's try a lot of different things, but try to do it methodically. Well, Alien Invasion, Hudson Valley, it's on Discovery Plus. Um, and you also have a Roswell show also on uh, Discovery Plus. So you can check out. Oh, that. yeah. The, the Roswell show, a lot of people have been uh, contacting me about this. It's, um, it's done really well because a lot of people didn't know much about Roswell. And this is a six-part series. It's an hour each. And it takes you through the whole timeline of Roswell. But the thing that the producers, when they approached me on it, they added was they discovered this new deception detection technology. It's really awesome. So basically, you can take a video of a witness who's dead now. We can't interview them directly. But the artificial intelligence of the program analyzes their facial gestures, the tone of their voice, and, and the content of what they're actually saying. And um, the studies on this place it as accurate as 92%, wow. right? And so we can take those interviews and those witnesses and put this all together and really add some credibility to what they're saying. And I think it presents an awesome case. That's pretty wild. I'm going to check that out. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you doing the show. And uh, where can people follow you to see what else you're up to? So my website, benhanson.com. Um, is, is kind of where I, I post stuff coming up to or all my social media and Twitter and all that. But um, as of right now, I think even the reruns of, of uh, UFO Witness and things that I've done are all up on the Discovery Plus app, the streaming app. And sometimes one of these new shows will come out, they'll air concurrently on both the Travel Channel, which you might have on your cable, and then Discovery Plus. So that's where everything is. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you doing this. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you talk so much. Yeah. You're welcome. We'll talk thanks to you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.